G'day, Chris here and welcome back to Clickspring. One of the cutting tools required to make this impossible dovetail puzzle is a narrow tapered dovetail cutter like this. It has an included angle of 22 degrees and four teeth formed by milling four straight flutes. Each tooth has positive rake generated from the way the flutes are milled past the centre line and I'll grind in some relief angles behind each tooth after it's been hardened. Starting with this section of oil hardening tool steel, the first step was to turn the basic profile to shape. And of course I'm going to need something for the chuck to hold onto when I start forming the tapered section of the cutter. So I'm turning the profile for the shank first. The cutting teeth need to be concentric with this shank, so I'm removing the three jaw chuck and using an ER collar chuck from here on to give a better result. And you can see there's quite a bit of work sticking out from the collar and it's all supported by that narrow shank so a bit of tailstock support will be needed to get an accurate cut. Once that support was in place, I formed the tapered profile of the cutter. At this point, the workpiece is essentially a cutter blank, ready to have some teeth formed. So the next step was to transfer it to the mill to cut the four flutes. Now that most of the shaping of the cutter is complete, it can be taken to a red heat, quenched in oil to harden and then slowly tempered to a light straw colour. Now ideally I'd form the relief angles using a tool cutter grinder, but I don't have one, so I'm freehand grinding them using this bench grinder. I'm keeping the contact with the wheel quite short to keep the heat generated to a minimum. I don't want the temperature to rise so much that it softens those cutting edges. At this point the cutter is basically complete. It just needs to have the small burrs removed and the cutting edges honed. And I found that it's a particularly easy cutter to sharpen. It sits comfortably on the bench and a small oil stone runs neatly down the flutes. OK, so with all the edges honed and ready to cut, let's give it a run and see how it performs. I've used a standard end mill to remove the bulk of the waste stock from this test piece of aluminium, so that I put the lowest possible burden on the cutter. And for the most part, it seems to perform quite well. As always though, there are some limitations. For one thing, it can't be run very hard. If the cutter heats up too much, the carbon steel will become annealed and immediately lose its cutting edge. It's a light duty cutter suited to relatively soft materials. The speed of the cut at the top of the tool is also much slower than at the bottom, and the cutting geometry at the top is less than perfect too. So whilst the bottom is forming nice chips, the top is a little more inclined to rub the metal rather than cut it. 
it wasn't a huge issue and a partial solution was to take a finishing pass on either side, as well as use some abrasive paper to knock down the bird, but still it's not ideal. And finally, it's unlikely that the taper I formed on the lathe has survived my freehand grinding of the relief angles, particularly as I resharpen it. The accuracy was fine for the project I used this cutter on, but I think it's fair to say that freehand grinding of the relief limits the cutter to relatively low precision work, like profiling and contouring. Having said all that, it cuts aluminium surprisingly well, and seems like a reasonable option for low volume, low precision work in softer materials, particularly if there's nothing available commercially. Thanks for watching, I'll see you later. And if this is your first ClickSpring video, welcome. I post regular home machine shop project videos like this one, as well as videos on a longer term clock making project, so be sure to subscribe. If you're looking for some new projects for your lathe or mill, then take a moment to visit clickspringprojects.com, where you'll find the plans for this and several other projects available for download. And finally, if you'd like to help with the creation of these videos, then have a look at the ClickSpring Patreon page. Thanks again for watching, I'll catch you on the next video.